Hello there, welcome to this video. Let's see in a short time everything you need to know to start using Autodesk Maya 2017. Leave us comments to improve our next videos. Autodesk Maya is a software used to make 3D graphics and animations by using a simple direct interface. In this beginner tutorial, we will see the most important tools to create a basic project, but consider that you may need more practice and experience to make more complex ones. Maya has several kinds of objects and tools used to build a complete custom 2D or 3D model, all listed right above your main workspace. Let's start with the 2D tools. To draw basic 2D objects, also called NURBS, you have to use the tools under the Curves Surfaces tab. Hover on a tool button to know its function and click on it to drop the respective object. For example, the NURBS Circle drops a circle, whereas the NURBS Square drops a square. But if you choose the EP Curve tool, you can draw a custom curve by fixing points and nodes. You can either click once on your workspace to fix a point, or click and hold on it to check a preview of the curve and release the click to drop the curve shape. If you choose the Pencil Curve tool, you will draw freehand by clicking and dragging on your workspace. These 2D curves always lay on the ground plane, which is the plane indicated by the two X and Z axis, as you can see from the Cartesian system in the bottom left corner. To draw precisely, set your project preview carefully. Use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Hold Alt down and click and drag to rotate the project in 3D. Hold Alt down and click and hold on your mouse wheel to enable the Pan tool used to adjust the workspace center or target. Maya can use snappings to make drawings easier through the several snapping tools right above. You can snap your pointer to the workspace grids, curves, or points. In this way, you won't need to be very precise at picking the right points or taking the right measurements. If you make a mistake on anything, use Ctrl and Z to undo your latest action. Besides simple 2D curves that may on a 2D ground plane, you can also drop 2D objects like the surfaces. These indeed are 2D objects without any volume that occupy all three space dimensions, so the X and the Z axis indicating length and width, but also the Y axis indicating the height. All surface tools are in the right section of the Curves Surfaces tab. Basically, there are two main ways to create a surface. One is to use ready templates like spheres, cubes, cylinders, and so on. Just click once on the respective tool, and these are dropped in the center of your workspace. Other tools are able to create custom surfaces with a more complex shape by selecting one or more 2D existing curves first. For example, the Revolve tool creates a surface by revolving a 2D path around the Y-axis. The Planar tool creates a surface by selecting and covering any custom 2D closed curve. The Extrude tool creates a conductor surface by selecting a closed curve to take as a constant section and another open curve to use as main direction. All surfaces do not have any volume. To create 3D solids with volume, you have to use the drawing tools under the Polygons tab. These tools drop a regular shape on your workspace like a sphere, a cube, a cylinder, or a cone. Then, Starting from these basic shapes, you can realize custom shapes as you like. Let's see shortly how to do so. Inside Maya, there are several different ways to edit a system. You can edit a single object as it is, or you can work with multiple objects at the same time. 
Even more, you can choose to edit either of the object subcomponents like vertices, sides, or faces. For this reason, you have to know how to use the selection tools inside Maya. The selection tools are located on the far left. The first one is called Select Tool and selects one object per time by clicking on them. This will be highlighted in green color. Click outside to deselect. Also, if you click and drag with the Select Tool, you will create a selection area that is used to select all objects that fall inside it. This allows you to select more objects at the same time in order to edit all of them in the same way while using any editing tool. You also have two other selection tools, more below. The Lasso tool selects objects by using a freehand selection area, whereas the Paint selection tool works just with the object subcomponents, so with its vertices, edges, and faces. These are all selected as you brush on them, with a radius indicated in red on the pointer. Once the object, group of objects, or subcomponents are selected, you can start editing them by using the features and the tools we are going to see. Let's suppose to select a whole single object, you can use Ctrl and X to cut or remove the object, and Ctrl and C and Ctrl and V to copy and paste it. If you enable the Move tool, a Cartesian system appears on the object itself. Each arrow represents the respective axis direction it refers to. So, if you click and drag on the blue arrow, you will move along the z-axis only. You can also move along a plane by clicking and dragging from the colored squares, or move completely freely by clicking and dragging from the central square. If you enable the Rotate tool, you will be able to 3D rotate your object respect to the different Cartesian axis, depending on the color chosen. Use the external light blue circle to rotate with respect to your own point of view on the project. If you enable the Scale tool, you can scale the object towards any direction. If you want to scale the object without deforming it, just drag from the central yellow cube. Each of these tools can be adjusted through the Tool Settings panel that you can open through its button in the top right corner. It is quite different working with the whole object as seen or its inner subcomponents. In fact, if you try to move or rotate the object subcomponents, you will be able to deform the object and especially customize its shape as you like most by applying the editing tools on them. You can manage the object subcomponents through the Modeling Toolkit panel on the right. Here you can choose to work with the whole object, its single vertices, its single sides, or its single faces. Check how the selection becomes blue when you select any of the object subcomponents. Once the kind of subcomponent is fixed, use the selection tools to select the right ones and then start editing. Depending on the kind of object selected, you can use other advanced editing tools available inside Maya. For example, if you have a 2D curve selected, you can use all the advanced editing tools under the Curves section. So, if you use the Curve Editing tool, you can edit the curve just made. And, in case this is linked to any surface, this will be updated live. If you have selected a polygon, you can use Smooth to increase the number of subcomponents of the object in order to make it smoother and so to edit it more precisely. Use Bevel Components to add bevel on the contours. Consider that all these advanced editing tools are related to the right kind of object as the color of the tool suggests. To customize the shape of solid polygons more efficiently, you can use the 3D tools under Sculpting. These allow you to edit polygons more easily without using the polygon subcomponents. Just select the whole object polygon, enable the Sculpting tool interested, 
and check the tool settings panel to adjust the brush size, hardness, and style. Then just click and drag to apply the tool on the object. In case the tool does not work, make sure to have selected an object with a sufficient smoothness level with respect to the brush size and hardness chosen on the tool, as long as there is enough matching between the brush size and the object size. Otherwise, the tool may not work as expected. Let's see now the very basics to make a simple animation. The timeline to which all the animations do refer in time is right below your workspace. Time is divided into several frames, one after another, that can be played in sequence by using the player on the right. In short, animations on an object work by using keys or keyframes. These are fixed points on your timeline that do save the object characteristics such as attributes, size, position, and even effects. In this way, if you can place two of these keyframes one after another, an animation is made, which passes from the state saved by the first keyframe to the state of the second one. Plus, the distance between the two keyframes does fix the animation speed between the two. The farer the keyframes are, the longer the animation will be. To apply animation, select the object to animate, fix the frame where you want the animation to start, and press the S key from your keyboard. This fixes the first keyframe that will save as state the actual attribute your object has at the moment. Then fix the timeline playhead on the frame where you want the animation to end, and then edit the object. A new keyframe will automatically be added and saves the final object characteristics that you have reached. If you play the system, the animation is made between the two different states. If you make a mistake and you need to remove a keyframe, simply place the playhead on the keyframe, right-click, and go to cut. If the animation is too short in time, just enlong the timeline by typing the number of the maximum frames on the right. Of course, each object on the project has independent animations, so an independent set of keyframes each. But still, they do share the same project timeline. Even more, animations can be applied on object subcomponents as well in order to edit your object shape in time. The animation is always made by frames. This is then converted in time by using a conversion factor in frames per second FPS that you can fix by going to Animation Preferences and then to Time Slider. Once your project is made, you can save it by going to File and then to Save Scene As. These projects are saved in an MB format and can be opened anytime. Thanks for following this guide. Check out our YouTube channel for more amazing video tutorials.